What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoon. And today I'm going to show you how to illustrate something with a rocky or kind of stony kind of texture. In other words, I'm going to show you how to draw something as if it were chiseled out of stone. So, what will you need for this video? Obviously a pencil, I'm using Copic markers to color, I'm using the warm grays, I'm using W3, W5, W7, W9, and I'm using a black, this is number 110, number 100 could work, or if you have W10 that could also work, just a color with a dark value. I'm also gonna use a color pencil, this is number 90% French gray, it's the Prismacolor brand. We're only gonna need one colored pencil, so we're gonna need that, and then we're also gonna need a white colored pencil to add highlights. And then of course our ink pen, and that's pretty much it. So with that being said, let's get started. So when I'm drawing anything that's chiseled out of stone, I like to use my least dominant hand just so I can get some jagged lines for the contours. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand to do this first part. Just gonna make some, just gonna make a circle, or like an oval, or whatever, and see how these jagged lines are. I'm gonna make these. And then I'm gonna use my right hand to help give that some dimension. So I'm gonna draw lines on each, um, I don't wanna say anchor point, but like each point that I feel deserves some depth. So I'm using my right hand to kind of match those uh, contour lines that my left hand made. Doing the best I can because I get better jagged lines with my left hand than my right hand. So my left hand isn't completely useless when I'm drawing, especially if I'm right handed. So what I'm doing now is just filling in some empty spaces because I did end up leaving some empty spaces on the contours and I'm kind of making those uh, pointed at least a little bit just to help make it look like some rocks. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for now. So what I'm gonna do now to fill this empty space, I'm gonna draw pretty much any shape that I want and you can do the same thing too. So what I am gonna draw is the YouTube logo. And I'm gonna use my left hand to do it because again, it's my least dominant. Just so you can get some jagged lines. Okay, so that's a, a square. I made it into a trapezoid so we can get some um, some perspective going, at least a little bit. And then drawing a triangle for the play button inside of there. Get that a little jagged. Okay, and then while I still got this, I'm gonna try to add some depth with my left hand this time. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let me erase this line though. Okay, so let me zoom in real quick so I can show you guys something. So as you can see, this will be the top surface of the stone, this entire area here. And I'm gonna shade in the portion that's gonna be a slight darker. Okay, so we got the play button drawn. So now let me um, try to touch up these uh, jagged edges just to help darken that because you probably can't see it. Just pretty much tracing over your left-handed lines. Okay, so now we got the majority of our sketch done. Now what I'm gonna do is add some cracks. Now this is also something you can do with your left hand, but if you can write the letters X, Y, and Z, you can draw cracks. So I'm gonna just draw cracks on some of the corners 
of this inside square and possibly some on the outside. So I'm, so I'm gonna draw a crack starting here at this square. And then I'm also gonna draw some coming off of the contours, but still in this area. So again, using my left hand. And then the cracks don't even have to come from the square. They can just be anywhere on the rocky surface. Just little lines going to and from somewhere. And then if you want, you can probably draw like another hole that kind of matches this square. Just give this like a little hole and also give it some depth. And then you can also do some with the cracks. So like there's a little hole right there. You probably can't see it, but I drew like a little hole and gave that some depth. You can possibly apply that to like a couple places just so this looks good. And then a couple dots here and there. So now we got our sketch done. Let me grab my eraser. And now I'm gonna apply some inks to this. So I'm gonna do that in time lapse real quick and then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so now that the inks are down, I'm actually gonna start coloring. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna lay down my W3, which is my base color, and I'm gonna apply that to the entire illustration. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna apply my W7 to this part of the illustration because this part will have been carved down deeper. So that part will be a little bit darker compared to the rest. So I'm gonna apply that now because this will pose as the base color for just this section and for some of the holes that I drew throughout the illustration. So now I'm applying my W7 and I'm going to make this the base color for this edge because it's going to be a little bit um, darker in this area because it's as if the stone was carved in a little bit deeper. So that's why this portion of the drawing will be a little bit darker and I'm also going to apply this color to the holes that I drew throughout the illustration. Okay, so the base color of this section and the holes will be W5, which I already applied. So now since I still have W5, I'm actually gonna use this as a mid-tone for the actual drawing. So as you saw me do, I put W3 down as the base color first. So now I'm gonna use this color, W5, to shade. So I'm gonna apply this close to the contours of the illustration, and then also on the edges of the box. And then I'm also gonna apply a small portion of it to the cracks. And the reason I'm putting it on the cracks is because later on we'll be adding a white colored pencil for the highlights. And I want the white colored pencil to kind of show up because if we just leave it at W3, then it probably won't show because they're, they'll clash because they're close to the same value. This W3 that I put down and the white colored pencil, they're close to the same value. So I'm trying to get that dark. So I'm trying to make these cracks darker so that way the white colored pencil will be visible when we apply it. And then can't forget the play button over here or at least the triangle of the play button or something gonna apply some of that W5 there and then we're gonna blend it with our W3 
Okay, so now that we're done with W3 and we blended the W5, let's go to W7 so we can help build up on that contrast because I always love adding contrast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this W7 to some of the darkest parts. So I'm just gonna apply it close towards the edge, like mostly down here. And then since this color has a dark value, we can actually apply some of this onto the cracks. But not too much of it. Just like follow the lines of the cracks. Okay, and then we can go back with our W5 and blend it back. And then let's go back with our W3 to blend a little bit more. And I forgot to mention when I was blending at first that it's okay if the blending doesn't look the best because stone and rocks kind of have some texture and any false blending that you make can help define that texture. Like say some of the line strokes that you can probably see over in this area, those kind of say there's texture here, if that makes sense. So you don't have to pressure yourself to get the blending super smooth. So it's okay to leave it the way it is if you think it looks terrible. So now we can go back to this area, which was said to be a little bit darker. So for this area, W5 was our base, and I did apply some W7 over here towards the edges. So actually, let me reapply it. I'm also going to apply it here on underneath this triangle. And maybe here as well. Because um, as of right now, this is our mid-tone for just this area and for the holes. So like there's holes there. A hole right there. Okay, um, let's go back with W5 and blend it. So now it's a little bit more darker. So now I'm gonna use my darkest color for just this section, W9. So I'm just gonna follow the same areas that I've applied the W7 to, but except this color is a little bit darker. Apply some shades there. Some shades there as well. And I think that will do it for this color. So now we gotta work backwards. So we just applied the W9. Let's go back to W7 and try to blend it some more. And when we apply the W7, we probably gotta apply it to a more broad area than what we did at first. So like W7 goes to about here and then right there will be the blending. So right now we gotta expound on the area that we apply the W7. So I'm just gonna go in some more into this area. And what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add a few spots here to help define that texture that I mentioned earlier with the cracks or the blending I meant. And then apply some blending here. And we're covering a bigger area with this W7. And we're also layering as well so we can get this entire area darker. Let's 
add a few more dots here. And then let's go in with W5 and blend everything back together. Because by then it should be dark enough for us to say that when we chiseled this stone, we went in a little bit deeper. So now all we got left to do are these 3D portions. So you can see these places where we added depth before. That's all we got left to do. And then apply the white colored pencil. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take my W5 again. I'm gonna use this as the base color for these 3D uh, portions of the illustration. So I'm gonna just fill in the base with this W5. Okay, so you might think that we're gonna do the same thing that we did for this enclosed area, but instead of applying an even darker color, we're actually gonna go to W7 to shade in those portions, and we're gonna stop there, because we're not gonna make that any more darker. So let's apply W7, and if we need to go even a little bit darker, what we can do is layer, because even though we have another color to help us, we're not gonna go that far. Because once we apply the base color one more time, it'll kind of lighten up that um, W7. Okay, so now that's a little bit light. And that's exactly what we need. So, if I want to go a little bit darker, I can apply W7 and layer on top of layer. I can definitely do that. So this is the first one I applied, so I can apply another layer to make it a little bit darker if I want. And we're not gonna do too much of that because we also have our ink pen to help define those points in the cracks. So let's go back down here and apply it again. This is a bigger area, so we gotta um, take our time with this one. And it's on the contours as well, so just go slow. Okay, so now that we got that done applied, let's go with our W5 and blend it back. And then I just missed an area up here. And then I also missed this area, so let me fix that right quick. So even though we have a lot of texture in the illustration already, what I am gonna do is take my color pencil, this is 90% French Gray, the Prismacolor brand again. So I'm gonna take this and lightly scribble in some grain. Get some grainy texture going. And then I, I went in one direction, so let me go in another direction. Just so the entire illustration looks like I didn't scribble in just one direction of colored pencil. So I want to kind of even those out. And then you can push a little bit harder in some dark areas like this one. But push hard enough so that it's still visible. Like that's visible enough to me and then the triangle in the middle all right and now all we got left to do is apply our white colored pencil 
So I'm gonna apply that to some light areas. And since it's already sharp, I don't have to worry about sharpening it mid-session. And then I'm also gonna apply it to the outsides of this box because apparently I went outside the lines just a little bit. The white colored pencil will help fix that. Even if it doesn't do much, it still takes it out at least a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna apply this white colored pencil also to the cracks that I said we were gonna apply it to. All right, and that looks about it. We are done. That's how you draw and color something that looks like it was chiseled out of stone. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.